Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I have a really interesting comment uh, from a subscriber of mine. Um, Gabrielle and I. Uh, how you doing, sweetie? The comment is, I'm an educator and librarian who has been telling younger students for years that just because it is published on the internet doesn't make it true. I subscribe to your channel for fun and because you provided the most detailed knowledge about my Chanel hobby. Little did I suspect that it would be here that I would hear my words about research and education echoed. I may have to borrow your words and share with my students that getting to the truth has never been so easy and so difficult. Thank you, Jacob. Google can bring you back 100,000 answers. A librarian can bring you back the right one. Neil Gal Galman, award-winning author. Um, you know, this is an interesting topic, and when it comes to going deeper and further and digging towards the truth, we always have to bear in mind that we have to be cautious. You know, it's easy to uh, just find a solution, an answer to, to a question, if you're just gonna, if you just want to get rid of the question quickly, and so if you do a quick search, you can find a myriad of answers. You can just pick one and and go for it, you know. However, the real truth is deeper. It's more complex than that. In order to find uh, an answer to one question, you're gonna have to analyze uh, the prospect. Um, at hand from many different variations, angles, and facets. This requires more in-depth research and it requires also mm, knowing where to look for. And that's why it's an interesting quote to say a librarian is gonna bring you that one right answer. Why? Because a librarian is gonna have that knowledge inside of their heads and all of the quotes and all of the reference points of all the other books that are intertwined and interconnected so that they can literally deliver to you the right answer because they're going to be on so many levels um, connected to the truth. You know what I mean? Because they would have read all these books. They would have had interaction with all of these books. So in order to say, uh, this is the answer to your question, it's in, it, it isn't as simple as that. You're going to have to say, well, this would be the answer to your question. However, why is this the answer to your question? And then we start digging deeper and we start asking ourselves, ah, okay. So to get from A to B, we have to cross through E, F, Z, W, X, L, M, you know, and we have to understand all of those islands and all of those points. And when they're inter when, when they're intertwined and interconnected and interact with each other completely, we get that net infrastructure, we get that whole pattern laid out in front of us that explains to us what actually is going on, what is happening. Now we start understanding why the answer to A is B. And it's very fascinating to me because um you know, when I was uh, when I was uh, in high school, and I think I I, tell, I, I said this story before, I, or I told a part of the story that uh, my math professor always used to tell, always used to tell me that math is a is a philosophy. It's not really a science. And I mean, you know, mathematics to me was doable kind of. I'm not really a mathematical type of person when it comes to numbers, but I was kind of capable of doing it as long as, you know, you had to solve number issues. But then at a certain point, math to me became letters. You know, as long as it's two plus two is four, I get it. But then at a certain point, there were the formulas became so complex and abstract, and there was more letters than actual numbers involved. And that sort of abstract thinking, which was abstract to me at least, uh, made absolutely no sense anymore. And like math lost me. <laughs> you could say I lost math, but actually math lost me. And, and still to this day, I really can't relate. But why am I saying this? Because um, I guess because once I realized, for example, that even in math, you have to reach the answer to the question, you have to pass through a myriad of complex kind of mental processes and understanding certain logics and understanding certain passages that perhaps some other scientist or philosopher 
paved the way, you know, in order for you to be able to cross them prior to you actually crossing them. Um, it's a complex world we live in. And so researching towards the truth or going, coming as close as we can to the truth, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time and it's going to take a lot of discipline and it's going to take a lot of passion and dedication because you have to dedicate yourself to it, to the research. And it has to obsess you because, I mean, even Stephen Hawkins, you know, as, as close as we think or he thinks that he is coming to the truth, he still kind of keeps saying no. It's like still far away and there's still things that fascinate you, that surprise you, that kind of, you know, catapult you in a direction where you didn't think you were going to just because all of a sudden something has been said in a certain way that triggered uh, an entire interaction, an entire sequence of other events that lead you to a totally different result of both thought and factual, um, I guess, iterations or, or uh, representations of, of the truth or, or dynamics or physics or whatever have you. It depends what you're looking for. So I guess at the end of the day, we all have to decide who is our librarian. You know, to some, the librarian is religion. You know, it's a holy book from whatever religion. Let's not talk about one in specific, but to some, the, the answer is there. To some, the answer is not there. You know, some uh, nevertheless believe in other sorts of religions, like a scientific religion. I mean, the Big Bang Theory is also, you, you got to believe it. You can't really prove it. You know, the Big Bang as a librarian that delivers to you through time and space and uh, derelicts and relics of, of, of past um, kind of bits of the truth. Uh, you could also believe in, in emotions, your emotions being the librarian. I believe in beauty. I believe in proportions. I think there's that, that's like the only thing that really is a constant in our life. And it's not necessarily symmetry, even though symmetry is also very important. We have like these canons of beauty because like, you know, if, 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 if the physical aesthetics of the body, you know, the more symmetric of faces and the closer that human being is to being a model actually because a lot of us don't I mean none of us have really symmetric faces but our brains play tricks on us because nature is built that way so that the second we see something we our brain creates symmetry so there's this app online I forgot its name you could look at a face of a human being so when I look at you, it, it, when I look at your face, my brain plays tricks on me. It literally does something that you could do when you're using your retouching apps, your Facetune this, your Adobe that, your you know Final Cut this and that, all of the Photoshopping. The brain does it already for you. When you look at, into or at another human's face, the brain aligns aligns the face, aligns uh, the symmetry. And so to your brain, the face of another human being that you're looking at appears to be more symmetric than it in reality really is. And this app that I forgot the name of now, basically mm, counters that trick that your, that, that your brain plays on you and allows you to perceive and see the, the facial features for what they really are without the brain kind of creating symmetry. And truth be told, we look more monstrous <laughs> than we think we, uh, we do because there's less symmetry there um, than we think there is or than, than, than we would hope there would be. That's super fascinating. So to me, my librarian is aesthetics. It is beauty. It is kind of a sort of, you know, that's why when I look at a Chanel bag or when I'm, you know, I, I, to me, the, the holy grail of, of, of aesthetics is a leather Chanel bag or a jersey Chanel bag. And, you know, the kilting has to be aligned to a certain degree. I allow a little bit space because they're kind of handmade in a, in a way, you know, a little, there could be a little bit of, it gives the bag character if, if, if the lines aren't as perfect. But we're talking millimeters here. Um, the proportions of it, the smell of it, you know, the, the shape of it. To me, that's my librarian. That tells me the truth visually, emotionally, you know, it's almost like the Stendhal syndrome, you know, when you kind of fall into a painting because it's so beautiful, it kind of inspires you. And I have that with, with many instances every day. As we're filming now, uh, if I were to lower the camera, we're, we're not going to do it because we got to keep the mystery alive. But uh, the table is full of stuff. 
So I don't know. I could just look at that. I have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I have Krang here from uh, the 80s. <laughs> you know, I have uh, uh, Star Wars tissues. Um, what else do I have here? I have a Chanel lipstick. Oh, this is something. Um, Cyberdog.net. I actually, I'm going to show you this. You see, I have this gorgeous piece here, which I might use in a video. I might even use it today. I bought this many years ago. A plexiglass visor. Let's just put it on. Oh my God, I see everything red now. Okay, so this to me is the truth. You know what I mean? It, it, oh, wow. Okay, everything is red and orange. This looks incredible, by the way. Okay. I'm in shock because the colors are so beautiful. So this to me right now is the truth. You know what I mean? And it's the beauty of this color that totally is like filtering through my entire perspective of the world and it allows me to see another dimension literally that's my librarian what i'm trying to say in this video which is appears to be in surface completely chaotic in reality isn't at all what i'm trying to tell you is look for your librarian find your librarian and ask the librarian questions as many as you want and the right answers will come to you there you have it guys Thank you so much for watching my Tron visor. I'm going to take it off now. Oh, wow. that was an experience. It was so trippy. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please do thumb it up and let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Tell me your theories about the truth as well. If you haven't already, but do wish to, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget, no matter how far away the truth might appear in the beginning, don't you fret none. As long as you don't give up on love, you will find the truth. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon. Take care. Bye.